Dental diseases are the most prevalent chronic diseases worldwide, with an estimated 2.4 billion people globally suffering from untreated dental decay alone. But what does that actually mean? Take a look at the image of this young woman. She has dental decay that is spread to the nerve and blood supply of her tooth. The tooth has died and become infected. The infection is spread through, drained out of the root of the tooth, and is pooling into the side of her mouth. That is why her face is swollen. At the top, you can see untreated dental decay. It doesn't look good, it doesn't smell good, and it's often painful. If your teeth or mouth look like this, it is not easy to eat, sleep, or concentrate. People make judgments, and this impacts on the way that you're treated. Now, in New Zealand, if you have a sore throat or the sniffles, you can go and see your GP, and your treatment is subsidised. But if you have teeth like this, and you're over the age of 18, there is no government funding. And that means that unless you have the money to pay for private dental care, there is nothing you can do about it, and that is not okay. So how do governments decide how to split the health dollar? If you had to decide between treating one person with cancer or 20 people with tonsils, getting their tonsils out, what would you do? To make this process as fair and transparent as possible, many governments are relying on economic evaluation. One method is using a quality of life questionnaire with an algorithm that can calculate a quality adjusted life year, or quali. A quali is a unit of benefit measurement that considers not just the cost of treatment, but the length of your life and the quality of your life. It's what these guys need to help them make really big decisions. There are currently no oral health related quality of life questionnaires with the algorithm that can calculate a quali, and that puts us on the back foot when trying to make a case for funding. My research is looking at how we can get that quali. I conducted dental examinations for 87 people and gave each of them two quality of life questionnaires to complete. One was oral health specific and the other was generic. I wanted to know whether or not the general health measure with the algorithm was reading the same as the oral health measure and whether or not it was sensitive to actual oral health status. Because if so, we have something tangible that shows government oral health is important. People are suffering. They need and deserve treatment, and at the least, it should be subsidised. Thank you.